Any M, this guy asks. Everybody does when they get into this friend chat on RuneScape. Welcome, welcome, folks, to the unofficial RuneScape noise making. I'm scouting for a friend's chat in RuneScape that hunts down the traveling merchant ship. Because there's things on there that I want, too. It changes his inventory every day. And because we can jump between different worlds, and just because he isn't spawned on one world doesn't mean he isn't necessarily there on all the worlds. So we all jump around and try to figure out where he's at, and call special events and stuff that are happening. So I am hopping. I'm on 76. I started at 30. There's another person doing 30 to 50, they said, and that's fine, so I just moved down. This is also practice, more or less. I'm practicing talking with my mouth open more. In the Valentine's Day video, it kind of paid off. It showed what I was, for me anyway, because I know what I sound like and what I'm trying to achieve. I made progress. I'm sure to others there's probably no difference or, I don't know, something about it is better, I hope. Still nothing. I just got booted. Somebody needs to be an admin. <laughs> I've been drawn emotional character sheets for my Uncle Joe characters. It's been fun seeing other people's stuff and then deciding how I want you know my characters to be portrayed my wife showed me the other day the importance of the under eyelid in real life squinching it's a thing I'll leave a link in the description it's a process of lifting your upper eyelid up a little bit to look more serious or just take a better picture. Well, using the eyelids in an illustration has significant power when conveying emotion. I'm not a big emotional guy. I'm mostly an analytical person. I'm creative, but I'm just not emotional about how I'm creating stuff. I'm analytical about how I break down how I want to convey a certain emotion or a feeling or an ambience or just, you know, a quick progression. I'm still learning in my free time. Da Vinci Resolve 16. Sorry, I'm hopping. It's world 88 now. Nobody's finding anything. Toys has kicked me out of the friend chat room and that's fine moving on to 89 I have never played a game of fish flingers I remember when it was implemented and it is February 19th 2020 I'm playing on a character that's been maxed for a couple years on RuneScape and looking forward they're putting a new skill in called archaeology and to be fair the last skill invention really breathed new life into this game for me it's what's called an elite skill you have to have like three other skills up to like 88 or above and then you unlock this skill and then it has its own sets of levels and different things that happen within those levels it's invention. You basically combine things from different skill sets. Like you can augment your weapons and give them special effects. Hey, it's the whale. What's up, buddy? I want to find the traveling merchant and move on. I'm like, dude, I will find. The merchant, because the f friend's chat, 
you know, always does. Right now, there's no admin. So it's basically just a bunch of us scouts jumping around, talking to each other. Mainly because none of us want to be an admin. We'll tell each other if we find it. We'll probably say it in there. That in, in Discord... Shit. Okay, I just logged out again. <sighs> what world was I on? 98. Man, that is so nice. I didn't used to do that. I love all the attention to detail that RuneScape puts into stuff now. Like, I just got 120 invention. I got 99. I think the same year it came out. It might have been the year afterwards, I don't remember, but not too long. You know. Well, the thing with invention is that you can put an augment, or an augmentor, on a piece of equipment, skilling or combat, and then fasten in gizmos that have special effects that are called perks. Here's an example of my pickaxe. It has an effect that gives me like plus 12% to have the pickaxe do a crit, which means that I'll get more experience per run at getting the ore. And then at level 120, there's really no more reason for you to do anything, so you can level up all of your stuff to like 20, because each augmented piece of equipment gains its own levels, and it has its own experience. In fact, what I did the quickest way to get to 120, and it still took me quite a while, was I used augmented uh, skiller stuff, like my pickaxe and my hatchet and my fishing rod. And you can get these things that are called siphons, and you can siphon the experience off of these uh, items. And it goes to your character for their invention levels. I'm going to world 106 now. What's special about this world? It's the German world. Unfortunately, the merchant's not here. 114's a level restriction world. You gotta have a total level to get on here. With a new skill coming out, archaeology, which will be fun. They say archaeology is not like invention, where it requires a bunch of other stuff from other skills. And has a totally different uh, experience curve per levels, you know, 1 to 99, and possibly 99 to 120. Because 120 is the new 99 in RuneScape, I guess. That's how they're keeping people interested. Is they're putting in more content. It's just after 99, if you so choose. This is what scouting is like. If you're one of those people that just sit there and wait until a scout finds what you're looking for, this is what it's like on the other end of that. I will be honest. I will be 100% fair. I am not always a scout. Like, there's this thing in RuneScape where you hunt down and track down penguins that are spies. And uh, I used to participate quite a bit in penguin tracking. That's where everybody tells everybody where the penguins are. And back in the day, before Jagex, the folks that do RuneScape, or, uh, or the developers for RuneScape got their stuff together, it often required a team of people that would stand around and do nothing but open doors so that people could come in and uh, click on the penguin and get their penguin points. Which was a big deal because it was free experience basically for just running around for like 15 minutes. Normally it would take quite a while, maybe, I don't know. It never really took me that long. Normally it takes a little bit, but obviously with such coordination it really went down. You could f get all the penguins you could get for a week in a matter of like 15-20 minutes, maybe a half hour, depending on where they were and what teleports you needed to get there. I helped with that for more than a year, and then afterwards I was like, hey, I'm going to be one of those people that just sit there and wait for people to call things. And it did. Right now I'm not doing that because there are livid plants and I'm just about ready to finish that off and not have to ever, 
ever, ever have to do that again. I mean, I will. I said the same thing about uh, herb lore is a skill in RuneScape where you make potions. And I got 99 herb lore, and I was like, F herb lore. And I dumped a, a tremendous amount of stuff out of my bank once I capped it. And I took a long break and I came back and they made it 120 as well. Bam, here you go. And some of the stuff makes sense. I mean, you know, for progression of power, being able to do bomb potions and stuff. That's cool. Oh my gosh. I'm going into world 139 now. Remember, I think I began recording this either at 50 or 80. I don't remember which. I usually hang around in the world 84 or 86. All right, here we go, 140. 140 has been a lucky world for me for whatever reason, through a lot of stuff. Probably won't be because I'm recording right now, but when it comes to doing things for RuneScape. No, nothing. Hi, nothing. What's going on? Like at this point, I can't be sure that there's no merchant. 140, by the way, is the end of the list of worlds. So I'm gonna start over, bam, start on one. Yep, let's go to one. I just did a loop. Well, no, I think, I, like I said, I've started at 50. I might have started recording this at 80. Nothing on one. Two is the most populated world. Gailinior 2 is the, like, trade world for all of us world guardians and everybody that plays the game, basically. That's where all the trade stuff happens. There's about a thousand people on it right now. Most of the worlds I hang out on only have hundreds of people. I remember back in the day when there were all kinds of people. Although, as it turns out, back in the day when there were all kinds of people on every single world of RuneScape, there were a tremendous number of bots. So many bots. Like RuneScape made a thing about finding bots like I got a like now you can just walk up to now you can just walk up to one of the magistrates and just get a golden pitchfork but I earned a, a golden pitchfork back when it was difficult you had to report so many bots with a pitchfork in your hand and I, I used to at first paraded around and then like all things, you know, this is in my bank. My hoard. Every game, every game I play, I have a hoard. A giant collection of things. Even if I didn't mean to play the game like that, I guess. Why do you have that? Bringing it with me. Like, this is Call of Duty. Like, I don't care. I'm collecting it. taking up inventory space. I'm like, I know. They need to fix that. No game should be this way. All games should have a bank. Let you collect things and make a deal out of it. It adds life to every single piece of digital property you create when you do that. Why some games don't do that? Well, I don't know. So I can see some games why you would why well, you would do that to progress, you know, through the story and not have to flesh out the details and stuff. But let me tell you, that is a win-win right there. Like, look at the How You Train Your Dragon game for, the, I think, the PlayStation 3? Maybe 4? Possibly 2? How to Train Your Dragon, right? You could run around in this war very, very super limited world. You could fight your dragon with other dragons. You could raise dragons. You could have, you know, X number of dragons. It was a nice little, you know, cheap money grab game meant for a movie. I get why they didn't want that to be an immersive, like, super crazy game. Or why games like that happen. Bam. We're going to release this movie. Oh, yeah? Yeah. But, oh, here it comes. Yep, but, we're going to release it in four months. And senior management is like, oh, no problem. We have a beautiful 
development team we'll be able to make you something great won't be super polished but you know what i mean they're like yeah senior management goes to the development team and their manager it's like hey this is the project and they're like yeah we heard about this movie yeah we're excited and they're like yeah we're gonna do the game and all of the faces turn white we uh four months is not long enough to make a good game well, you're going to put that to the test. And then the chaos ensued. And if that's the case for this particular game I'm talking about, How to Train Your Dragon. Hey, I found a merchant! I'm going to interrupt myself. What world am I on? I was uh, 23. Let people know it's here. Because that's only fair. Alright, let's see how many livid points. 22,000. That's not bad. So Pauline, in RuneScape, runs this minigame called Livid Farm. Which is the most boring ass shit in the world. But the best farming spells come from this place. I don't have any runes on me, don't bother me with that. Gosh darn it, I need 4,000 more points. It's actually not bad. And then that finishes it off, I've got Borrow Power. Yay, they're all so happy. Wow, nobody said anything to them. There's a ton of people there. Gosh darn it, 4,000 points, really. <sighs> so Livid Farm is this mini game where you help this lady get produce. Paulina is her name. You also fix the farm while it's happening. And you generally get like 10 to 30 points per action. And then there's a harvest cycle where you can get like 100 or 200 points. I almost have cap points for what's called pre-wishes once you cap the entire mini game, which is at 43,000 points. You can then get special effects called wishes for certain points, which I'm not sure what. The reason I was hunting the traveling merchant is he sells those livid farm produce which is I, got, I just got 22,000 points for that it cost me a million gold though so uh, you know you can't be broke unfortunately I found this at the end after I already had 33,000 thousand points and had gotten a spell that I was I was looking for and then just kept doing this a few hours every day or an hour a day or a certain portion of how much time I got to play that day I would spend at the farm and I've been doing this for eight months. And then I find out you can just buy these things. I'm like, yes! So it's been a beautiful last of like 100,000 points and not having the mind numbingness that comes with this. Here, I better get out of here. I'm just going to continue. I just tried to play it and I don't have any of the stuff to play Livid Farm right now. I was just checking to see. So about one play session. And I can get that. Or just wait for that thing to come around. That's not bad. So this video is a special video. This is my RuneScape 120 invention video. I recorded all this while I was playing RuneScape as well. <laughs> so there will be a lot of editing, you know. So if you like this type of content, let me know, and I'll make more of this. So subscribe if you haven't. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I release new videos, which I generally release new videos on Sundays. And as always, be kind to one another. And use your turn signals. Hey folks, I just wanted to chime in on the end card because it's probably pretty apparent. This is different than the normal content I produce. I honestly didn't have time with being sick this week to get a video done, so I dusted off one of my filler videos, and that's what this is. So if you really like this content, definitely give it a like and let me know that, and I'll make more stuff like this. And I hope your day is better, if not equal, than what it was before you watched this entire video. Thank you.